Mohamed, great to have you on the ECN studio and, and great to have you at the European Cricket League. Thank you, Daniel, for inviting us, first of all, and providing us with the opportunity. So, really thankful to you. Yeah, m my pleasure. So, w what are some of your first memories of cricket? Uh, you're taking me more than 30 years back, Daniel. <laughs> so, first memory is playing street cricket, uh, playing cricket uh, at school, uh, playing cricket in garage at home. So these are the first memories, uh, and that's um, more than three decades ago. And what, what so, city was this in? This was in Islamabad in Pakistan, a uh, beautiful city. Uh, I would encourage everyone to visit that city. Uh, very well planned, very nice, clean, green. So it should be a must-visit city on everyone's list, basically. And, and you, you started playing at school or with the club? So I never formally uh, joined a club in Pakistan when I was playing there. Uh, I was part of a club that we put together. Uh, I played uh, some cricket at school. Uh, when I was in the junior school or primary school, uh, we played uh, cricket just to pass time. So when we uh, got into the middle school, uh, class uh, year six to eight, I was part of the school team in year eight. I was a leg spinner. Uh, and but that year the school didn't play any inter-school competition. We had the inter-houses competition, so we played in that, we lost in the final. Uh, and then when I was in year 10, I couldn't make it to the school team. Uh, year 12, I couldn't make it to the college team, uh, but I was playing uh, club cricket, and that was not a professional club, amateur club that we put together. Uh, so I was never a very, very good cricketer, so it was just a pastime really. But you loved it. And, and this was uh, hardball? This is hardball, yeah, hardball yeah. cricket. W were yeah. you playing tight ball and softball during your teenage years? Yeah, so we ha I have played all sorts of cricket, uh, with plastic ball, with tennis ball, with tape ball, uh, hardball, but night cricket, uh, with softball, with hardball. So I've played uh, nearly all, all sort of cricket, beach cricket as well, so yes. So p playing night cricket in Islamabad, tape ball, this, this gathers a crowd, right? This is, a, yeah. this is an event in itself. Oh yes, I mean, especially uh, in the month of Ramadan, it's a big thing uh, and it pulls a lot of crowd and it's pretty popular in Pakistan. Incredible, yeah. And, and then moving to Cyprus, so what, what was your first uh, memory of cricket in Cyprus? So I moved to Cyprus uh, in the late 90s uh, and I didn't know that there is uh, cricket being played in Cyprus uh, and one of my classmates he told me that Cyprus Cricket is organizing a competition, a uh, six aside competition so let's put together a team. Uh, so yeah sure why not. Uh, but we, we did manage to put together a team, but the competition didn't happen most probably, so we couldn't take part. But I found out about Cyprus Cricket through this classmate of mine, uh, and then I contacted Cyprus Cricket. Uh, well, not Cyprus Cricket, I contacted one of the clubs because on Cyprus Cricket website they had the club details. So I contacted a club called Mouflons Cricket Club, uh, and just to tell you, it's the oldest cricket club in Cyprus. And I'll tell you the story how the club got together. Uh, so yeah, the first memory was uh, really playing for for Mouflons against a touring uh, team. Uh, it was at Happy Valley Ground. Uh, There's the home of cricket in Cyprus uh, for quite some time. Uh, I I started as a bowler, so but didn't got many wickets that day. But yeah, it was a good game at the end. And and so so how did that club form? And what year? So a club. Um, was uh, put together by a Welshman, uh, a Welsh teacher uh, based in Cyprus, a Welsh expat, uh, in 1989. So at that time it was uh, really uh, military teams that were uh, playing cricket in Cyprus and that's the British military team playing inside the British military bases. And cricket was really thriving at that time. Uh, there were nearly uh, 20 plus teams playing cricket on a regular basis in late 80s, early 90s. So uh, this uh, guy, uh, I, sorry, I forgot his name, to be honest with you. I was not in Cyprus at that time. So uh, he put together, he put a advertisement in a pub and uh, recruit, trying to recruit players. Uh, and he said, let's, let's play some cricket uh, with the military teams. 
and uh, so he managed to put together a team that was 89 and really it was a social side initially and uh, what the key thing was to get the game that Mouflons uh, would offer barbecue and drinks uh, to the opposition so that they keep inviting us so that was really the key thing and it w Mouflons were, uh, was a social club for, for quite some time we were struggling to get players in the early 2000s but then the club got stronger and stronger uh, in the uh, around 2012 and afterwards uh, and recently it managed to uh, get some wins under the belt uh, and that's why we are here at the European Champions League uh, we won the competition uh, last year the domestic T20 uh, so the club has done uh, well re uh, in the recent past and and it must have been really successful in bringing a lot of people together and, and for you to form a lot of friendships in those early days of discovering cricket in in the country and then joining and, and uh, finding a community there certainly i mean uh, cricket uh, it's it's uh, i mean it's all about socializing uh, for me uh, and you get to meet so many uh, new people and eventually they become friends uh, and you expand your networking circle uh, and that's how i found out about you as well uh, through cricket so cricket is uh, really uh, a very good uh, socializing tool uh, brings people together from different nationalities. I mean, I, I remember one day we were we were playing a friendly game, and we had eight different nationalities in the team. I mean, unbelievable. I mean, you tell me. I mean, how many sports can uh, bring that many nationalities together in one team? Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And and Cyprus is a country that's actually built for cricket for a very long cricket season. You know, to, so that the weather there. You know the, the tourist opportunities. I think Richard Cox, uh, uh, your national team coach as well, he was on holiday in Cyprus when he uh, realised cricket was there. I mean, it, 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 Cyprus should be a thriving cricket country, and I know you're doing a huge amount of work to try and bring this all together now. Um, it, it, to tell us about your junior setup and, and junior programs with the schools that you've started. Yeah, I mean, again, thanks to you, uh, cricket school, as you can say. Uh, so we are we are trying our best uh, to grow the game. And what uh, we have noticed is cricket, cricket is still alien uh, to to the population, uh, and it's not only in Cyprus, in in most of the European countries. So don't, we don't expect people to come, and that's what we have noticed. People are not coming, so you have to go, uh, and you have to take cricket to the people. And the easiest way uh, to do it uh, is through schools. So what we did uh, this year, we did something different. Uh, we approached uh, the Ministry of Education uh, last year. And uh, we said that uh, we don't want any financial support. Uh, what our offer was that if you can grant us access to public primary schools, uh, we can go uh, and teach or introduce cricket to the youngsters. So we don't want any money. Uh, we will provide uh, equipment we will send our coaches and we'll pay the coaches you will not pay and if any teacher is interested we will provide free coaching courses to the teachers as well uh, and we will then donate the equipment to the school so that they can run uh, cricket sessions whenever they want to and the ministry accepted our proposal uh, much to our delight uh, and we said fine uh, so this year we have rolled out uh, cricket school program uh, in Cyprus. Uh, initially, we have started with Paphos and Limassol uh, region, and we are targeting around 10,000 kids uh, playing uh, or getting introduced to cricket this year in Limassol and Paphos uh, through this program. And it's all uh, primary school kids who will be getting introduced to cricket. Uh, a small step from our side, basically, to introduce cricket uh, in our country. Uh, we had to look at our own resources as well, uh, financial and human, uh, because yes, we have access to all the schools, but we cannot go to each and every school. We don't have that many coaches, uh, we don't have that much money, but we have to live with whatever we have got. Uh, and so this year, that's why we are doing only Limassol and Paphos region, 
and hopefully uh, we'll get the permission to do this uh, again next year from the Ministry of Education and we'll try to expand it uh, to Larnaca and Nicosia region as well. Fantastic. No, you should be very proud of, of, of that uh, yeah, igniting of this whole, whole new, uh, new story and, and introducing the game to the youngsters. And what language are those schools uh, speaking mainly? Are they, are they English-speaking schools? So that was one of the challenge and still is a challenge. So it's uh, uh, Greek-speaking schools yep. and our coaches speak English. So when we sent out the letter to the schools, after getting the permission from the Ministry of Education, uh, we asked uh, that uh, PE teachers to assist our coaches. Mm -hmm. So it's all about communicating with the kids. But I'll tell you what, I mean, it doesn't matter what language the coach is speaking. It's all about demonstration. Once you tell the kids, this is what you have to do, they learn very quickly sure. and they will follow what you're telling them. And you don't have to repeat it more than one or two times. Yeah. They will be teaching you in five minutes' time, you know, yeah. and, and they learn so quick. Yeah. So it makes it easy. No, absolutely. Well, it's an advantage if they're Greek-speaking, they can learn some English at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, but, it, you know, as it grows, it'll be a Greek-speaking sport when the kids are playing it and enjoying it together. But that's why we, with T10 here, you know, it's a bat versus ball. You know, as, as you can run around and kick a football all, all you like. It's very hot to do that in Cyprus <laughs> in the summer. Um, yeah. But to be able to grab a bat and, and have a ball, you know, and try to smash it... That is, that's a feeling that every young athlete should get the chance to experience. So, you, you know, because once they've got the bat in their hand, then the magic starts taking over of the sport that we love and, the, and then it, it becomes much easier to grow and, and to, you know, build upon itself, whether it's in Greek or English or, or any language. But no, I'm super impressed by what you've done. Thank you. Thank you. So that, that's what happened. So in one of the sessions, uh, the kids and the teacher even, us. So where is the Cricket Academy where we can learn more about cricket, how we can uh, gain uh, access to equipment? So these were the questions that were asked. So there is interest. Uh, we are generating interest. Kids wants to uh, do more. Uh, so there, there are lots of opportunities. Yeah. We, we just have to take advantage of these opportunities. Yeah. And, and absolutely. And, and you know, uh, having the Muslims play here and having European Cricket Series events in Cyprus, obviously we're trying to do our bit for promotion and, and the marketing and, and putting a platform so the guys can be seen. Are, are there a lot of people, friends and family, that are watching these, these games that are taking part here? Oh, yeah, I mean, uh, they, they are watching and uh, they are following us. Uh, and, uh, I mean, we are thankful to them, uh, thankful to all of them, really, for their support. Uh, Cyprus Cricket is a big family, uh, unlike few other bigger countries. I mean, you cannot say that for every country. Uh, but Cyprus cricket, uh, I can say very easily, we are a very big family. So we support each other. So it's not that if Muflons are here, only Muflons fans and uh, fa our family members, players family members, they will be supporting. No. Everyone who's involved with Cyprus cricket, they will be supporting Cyprus Muflons because they say it's not Muflons, it's Cyprus. So that's the thing over there. We are a big family, and I'm thankful to them for their support and their cooperation all the time. Yeah, no, that's one one footer here. Um, you know, it, making the Champions League, you know, the champions coming here, it, it means that the domestic league is, you know, it's it's heated and there's a lot to play for now. And some of the scores that have been hit um, in the Ipsnes ground there have been been breathtaking. I know you've made some yeah. big hundreds there, but yeah. there was a 260 in a T20 match, I think. Yeah, that was uh, Ataula uh, Rahman. He scored 251 not out out of 313 in a T20 game. Uh, Class player, class player. I mean, he he's part of Muflons now, uh, and it's because of him uh, we are uh, at ECL this year. He scored a, a nearly 90 runs or something, nearly a century in the T20 final uh, last year. Uh, amazing player, uh, great guy, very humble guy, down to earth. Oh, what a batsman! Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm very sorry he is not here. Uh, he had some other commitments, but uh, unbelievable player, unbelievable. And then what you're doing for the women's game as well has been, uh, yeah, fantastic. And, and there's some tours with Sonia coming up this year as well? Yes, uh, so it's the first time ever our women uh, players will be playing uh, T20Is um, or any international cricket. And the first one will be ECIs, uh, Cyprus women versus Estonia women. A team are really looking forward to it because uh, the ladies uh, have been working hard uh, for the last 18 months or so. Uh, and uh, they're looking forward to it uh, more than us. 
uh, and uh, let's see, let's hope uh, that we can uh, build on it uh, and we can attract more women cricketers. So right now we have only one team and that's our national team as well. Uh, so we, we really want to build on the success uh, and the success would be hosting the ECIs and uh, the T20Is, and let's hope we can build on it. Yeah, but it's great, but the, the promotion and the support and then the improvement that'll happen, and it's great, the Terry and, and the Estonian women's team, they, they're working really hard in the, in the north yeah. there as well, yeah. uh, trying to be better as, as well, and it's a really pioneering effort, but it's a, it's a great thing that you're doing, and yeah, just want to say thanks and no, thank congratulations. You. And no, thank I'm, you. Thanks for your time. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.